Well, good morning, everybody. I uh, am Kelly Rao. I'm back here to show you how to uh, import and edit some uh, PDF pattern pages. Today we'll be working with the uh, adorable Harlequin pouch from Leanne Mosley. So um, in our previous video, I showed you ways to manipulate the pattern pieces so that uh, you could delete certain lines and such. But today I'm going to show you some, uh, some different techniques, um, introduce you to the layers panel. So let's just jump into it. The first thing you're going to need is your pattern. So I've already provided the link to that. And uh, so we're going to open the pattern. So just go file, open, and you're going to browse to the folder that you have it stored in. And double click it. This is your PDF pattern, remember. And hit open. And it's going to prompt you on this option here. It's going to say load all pages, load pages. We only want to import three pages. We want to import pages 9, 10, and 12. So you go 9, comma, 10, comma, 12. Be sure that the DPI is set to 72. Everything else should be just fine. So hit OK. And we wait patiently for this to render. So now on the left hand side, you'll see we have three pages and they're referred to as page one, two, and three. But again, we imported pages nine, 10, and 12. So let's start with uh, the first piece, which is again, page one. And we're, we can look at this and we see that there are two different pattern pieces on this page. Now we need to, um, anytime with Cricut, any text that is inside this box, really um, it can stay. There's no reason to remove it. Um, or you can delete it as we did before or you can use what's called the layer panel. I'm going to show you that over here. So you just expand it and you can see, because Leanne has designed this in a, a great program, no doubt, that all the lines and curves, everything are visible in the layers panel. And again, so we could click on this piece right here as an example, and it will be, we could uh, highlight it now but it shows you over here. It's already over here. Down here, you could deselect the checkbox and that will make it go away. And then you can select it again to make it appear. So the idea is instead of tearing apart your pattern and making very permanent changes such as deleting, you can use the layers panel to make more temporary changes to it. So that's pretty nice. Just a little tip for you. Also on some patterns, you'll find that if you start deleting lines permanently, you could be affecting other uh, pieces of the pattern and not know that. So try to get familiar with the uh, layers panel and uh, it's, uh, it's pretty powerful. So I think on this particular pattern, everything looks like the text is inside. So we don't have to do too much um, deleting or hiding. I think this little text up here, the Harlequin pouch, it might scooch over on the line. So I'm just gonna move it over here so it's out of the way. No harm done. And I'll do it for this piece here as well, just to be safe. Okay. So we're going to be working with two different pieces, first of all. And because we want to export them as individual JPEGs, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to work uh, with the top. So we need to hide all this bottom stuff here. So um, we're going to, and, the, and again, every pattern is different, but this pattern was designed in a way that's very easy to work with. So we click on the bottom one. And we just move this shape over here so it's out of the way. And now we can we can select this little bit here. And I am going to delete that because I don't need it. But we can delete this. And then you can just take your cursor and scroll over all of that. And then it's highlighted over here so we can hide it. I think everything is hidden now. Now we can take this box back, which is our pattern piece, and bring it back to the canvas. So that's nice. Looks like I also affected some of the stuff up here, but that's fine too. So we can uh, move that. 
just going to highlight these little bits that we don't need. Again, you can delete or you can just hide in the panel. All right, so now we have two clean pattern pieces. This is for our top and bottom, but we only want to work with one at a time. So you're going to select this bottom piece here, and you'll see over here on the right, it highlights it, and it says curve. Why don't we go ahead and just rename that to bottom? Easy, okay? Now we can hide this, and while we're at it, let's click on this top one and give her a name, or it a name, call it top. Okay, and now all we're going to do is export this one piece all by itself as a JPEG. So we're gonna go to File, Export, select JPEG. Under here where it says Pages, I only wanna pick page one and export. And you're going to export it to a place that you can find again. So let's call this one, I'm going to call it HP for Harlequin Pouch. I'll call it 1. Not very creative, but you get the idea. So HP 1, save. Great. And now I want to turn back on the bottom one, so I need to find it. So we just turn this back on. And now we're going to turn off the top curve layer by deselecting it, okay, and file, export, and JPEG, it still says page one, which is good, and export, we're going to put it where we can find it later on, this one we're going to call HP-2, okay, so now we've done that page. And I forgot to tell you, but while you're at it, before you even started manipulating all these different pattern pieces, you probably should save. So let's go file, save. And now we're working with a natural, if you will, what's the word native file for publisher? So we'll just call this HP edits. Edits. Okay. So now you have a nice raw file to work with. So next we're going to go work on the uh, lining page. So all you do is come on your over here and give it a double click. And everything here looks to be fine. We don't need this test square because now we know that when we import our pattern pieces into Cricut, they actually are two size. So we don't need to do the one inch stuff. So that we can select and we can either delete with or we can hide it. I'm just going to delete it because it's easier. And I don't think anything else is in the way. Just to be safe, I'll move this over a little bit. And that is that. Everything else here is not in the way. You know, I'm not sure about those little lines there, so I may just get rid of those two. You don't want to have anything to interfere with Cricut. Okay? So that looks good. We're going to go File, Export, JPEG. And now we're on page two. We don't want it to export page one again. So. Page two, export. We're gonna call this HP3. HP3. And last but not least, click on this last page over here, page three. And this is going to be an alternative uh, back for the uh, pouch. So you could either make the front be um, a duplicate of the back as far as having the, the pretty little side pieces, but in this case, just so we can learn more about Cricut and this program, we're going to use the plain outer back piece. So again, um, anything that needs to be taken off the page that's outside of the pattern should be removed or hidden in the layers panel. And I don't think this is in the way, but I'll just scoot it over. And I think this is fine too. So again, we just don't want to have anything that's going to be uh, possibly getting in the way of the boundary of the pattern piece. So now we're going to go File, Export, JPEG is selected, and Page 3. Hit Export, and now we have HP4. So that is it as far as importing your pattern pieces into Publisher and then making a, a few tweaks to the pattern pieces. And we are actually ready to go to um, get it into Cricut. And that's where the magic starts. So come back with me in a second. 
So now we're back uh, and we're going to be working in our Cricut design space. So we're going to import our four pattern pieces. We're going to do them separately. So you're going to click on new project and upload. Click on upload image. You can either browse or drag the images here. I'll just browse. We'll go to our HP assets folder. And here we have our HP one, two, three, and four. So we're gonna do one at a time. HP one we know is the top, hit open. And we're gonna select complex and hit continue. We're going to select our magic wand erase tool and click everything in the background and hit continue. And now we hit cut image and hit upload. So we're going to repeat that for the other three images. So let's just do that right now. If you want to fast forward on this part, by all means you can, but I'm going to continue on. Number three coming up here. And you'll notice when we uh, make the cut file that all of the text that was inside the box goes away anyhow. That's why I don't bother anymore to erase it because it's just steps that don't really matter. Like so. And last, we're going to upload pattern piece four. Complex. Next. Perfect. And cut image. Upload. So we're done. Now we can go to the new and we'll start working with the images. Let's take a quick break and I'll be right back. Okay, so let's go ahead and we're going to work with the top piece. So we're going to click Upload and actually find our top piece, which is this one, and hit Insert Images. Now we know in the pattern piece that this image is supposed to be uh, flipped or mirrored and cut two of them. So what we're going to do, just to keep things simple, is we're going to bring this over here, and now we're going to uh, right click or however you like and duplicate it and then we're going to bring it over here and now we're going to do a flip flip horizontal and now we have these two perfectly mirrored images for the top of our bag now if you're looking at this uh, pattern piece you can see let's say we usually want to have about an inch buffer space here so if we look at this, this over here is, it goes beyond the 12 inches and our mat is only 12 inches wide. So we're gonna need to flip these going the wrong way so that they can fit on our mat. So what we're gonna do is we're going to hit, first we're going to align them to the top, align top so that we know they're perfectly aligned. And now we're going to rotate them 90 degrees. hopefully like so you have to hit enter I guess all right so now it's it's we're gonna just bring this over here so that's about one inch and there with a margin of about one inch just because um, cook it needs in my opinion that little buffer area so now this is our top image now we can do something that's kind of fun that I learned 
I'm happy to share with you. First of all, just so we can see, let's change the top color of this to just another color so we can see. And what we're going to do is we're going to move this uh, piece on the bottom using your cursor key up and you can see right now, well, hopefully you can see, that they are mostly uh, abutted. Actually, they are abutted. So this is a new way if you want to do um, fussy cutting. I mean, it's not ideal, it's not, that you can, it's not pattern matching, but it is definitely fussy cutting. So now when Cricut cuts this, it's going to cut it exactly down the center with no space and create two beautifully mirrored images. So I think that is uh, it's pretty cool. So what we're going to do now is, um, so again, this is for your, we're only making the front with the two um, decorative pieces, if you will. But if you wanted to make and then doing your typical duplicate. And then you can move it over here. Like so, and we know that our canvas, as far as the cutting mat, can go up to 12 inches and you can go as far as you're going to need your 24 inch mat for that. So that's pretty cool. Um, so what we want to do now is, so I'm going to go ahead and since I don't need this one, I can hide it, which is this one. I don't need that one. This one. And this one looks like, okay. So that's a nice thing too about Cricut is you can hide things in the layer panel here as well. And the last thing you're going to want to do here is you're going to want to select them both. You can either click and you want to do what's called a attach. So you attach them and that way they will come out together as one file when we make the cut file. So you hit the at attach button and now we're just going to go to the make it. And here's the opportunity for you now to, if you want to adjust, um, well, here actually we need to tell it about a 24 inch mat. You're welcome to try to make it fit on the 12 inch mat, but it was kind of cozy. And um, also now is the time if you wanted to adjust where it, it cuts. If you have a particular fabric in mind or where you want it to cut, you can look at what you have set up on your mat as to where it will cut here and you can do some uh, fairly precise cutting. So I just love that part. You're, you are going to, um, right now you can see how much fabric you need by the cutting mat. So you need at least five inches wide by at least say 12 inches long. I would go probably at least, I think I would go six by about 13 to be safe. So that is that on this particular piece, you're gonna cut this. You're gonna be amazed how it cuts beautifully. And uh, so the only thing to do now is to uh, save it. So go ahead and save your file and then come back and we're gonna go on to the next piece. So we're gonna be working with the bottom piece next. So we're gonna go upload and we'll pick the bottom piece. That's the one that has the box corners. And we're gonna hit insert images. And just like before, we need to be able to cut, um, as the pattern instructs, a mirror image of this. So we just move it over here and then duplicate it. Find it. Duplicate bring it over here and we're going to flip it horizontally and now we have these two pieces now these pieces for me are going to be solid so I don't need to um, worry about fussy cutting I can focus more now about um, perhaps saving fabric and how I want to align them so I may just come up here and move this guy here and then put him here Let's see, would he fit up here? No, that's 13 inch. Let's see, I'm gonna play around just a little bit. Hopefully it won't be too boring for you, but let's see if we can get him on the mat. So it looks like, yeah. So if you play with it on the mat, you can pretty much get, get 
these two pieces that you need for the bottom to be cut within the uh, regular 12 inch by 12 inch mat. I mean, it's a little bit less waste of fabric. So you, there's nothing here to do anything special, just to get your uh, mat ready. Oh, you do want to, if you want them to cut like this, remember to select them both and then hit attach. And that's how they will come out on the cutting mat. Otherwise they come out any way they want and then you have to rearrange. So uh, just like before, go ahead and send them to the cut file and make your two background images. So next we're going to work on the lining. Lining's kind of fun, so come right back. So let's go ahead and up, let's go ahead and put the lining piece onto our screen, which will be this piece here. Insert. And we're going to drag it over here so we have some room. And then we're going to duplicate. Bring it over here. We're going to flip it horizontally. And now we're going to bring these images kind of together, but just so they align the top. So arrange, no, align, top, okay? And then, just so you can visually see this better, go ahead and we're gonna change the color of this piece to something that is more different, so you can see the differences. And we're going to nudge one of these pieces over so that it is right next to this guy. And then we're going to select all, or you can click on both. And down here in the bottom is what's called the weld tool. So go ahead and click weld. When you do that, it's going to become one image. There you go. So now this is your lining piece. It is perfectly the right size, and we are ready to cut that. Now we do need two of these, and let's just check, take a look at the size here. If we wanted to keep within our approximately one inch, it's getting kind of close here because this is 12 inch on the mat. So you're probably gonna want to cut this uh, twice going the other direction. So we can rotate this 90 degrees and then just get it so it's about one inch from each one and then do your duplicate and bring it down here like so and now you have two linings and you can see how much fabric you're going to need by looking at the dimensions here or when you get to the cut mat basically though it's going to be about eight inches wide by about i'll say 20 23 inches of fabric so it's, um, it cuts beautifully and then you don't have to worry about pinning and everything. There's a little bit of waste, so if that's a concern for you, by all means, use just your regular pin and fabric method. But this is just to show you how you can join two images to create one in Cricut. So the last piece we're gonna work on is the back piece and I'm gonna show you another fun technique for that. So come back in a moment. So we're on to the final stretch of this particular um, pattern. We're going to upload the back piece. So we're going to hit upload and choose our back piece. And this is just an alternate um, back, again, for those who didn't want to duplicate the front as per the pattern. And it is meant to be sewn together from the, this, this seam here, so that it mimics the front of the pattern, which is kind of pretty, and then you match up the seams here. Um, so what you would want to do is, just like before, you're going to duplicate it, and bring it over here. You will flip it, because we need to have mirror image. It's very important in this pattern. And all you would do here is um, just arrange how you like, and then you would attach them and you would cut them. But I have a fun little tip for you. So let's say that you wanted to actually just have a solid piece and you didn't want to uh, sew them together. The simple thing is to 
So we're going to delete this page here, this piece, and you're going to come over here to your sh uh, shape tool here. Pick a square. What we're going to do is we're going to make a this guy over here. We're going to turn off the uh, unlock it, if you will, and we're going to cut a three eighths of an inch, basically seam, if you will, off of this pattern. So I'll show you. So I'm just going to go like this. So what you want to do is you need to create this shape so that it is over here. I'm going to type in 0.375 times, we'll just say 7, and hit enter. Now let's change the color so you can see what's going to happen here. Make it yellow, okay? And we're going to put this bar right at the edge of the pattern piece, right, so that they line up on the right. Maybe go a little bit higher. 0.0375 is 3 eighths of an inch. <clears throat> and now you're going to select both images. So you hit select, select. And over here, down here on the right, you're going to hit the slice. Slice. Okay. And now, after it's done its magic, it's going to, it has now taken away this little 3 eighths of a piece right here. We don't need those anymore, so we can just delete. And this pattern piece now, you can right click, duplicate. We're going to flip this one, flip, horizontal, and let's go ahead and change the color of this one just so we can see what we're doing here. Okay, and make sure that they are aligned on the top. I think I did a little bit, but we'll do it again just to be safe. And now you're going to bring this one of them right next to the other one. Make sure that they are touching, otherwise you're going to get a cut file. And now you're going to select them both and hit Weld. And now you have a piece that will fit the back of the Harlequin pouch without a seam and you simply need to cut this. Would you go to all that trouble? Maybe not, but it's a fun way to learn um, all that you can do within the Cricut design space and that you do have a lot of uh, flexibility and power. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I will uh, be making more for you in the future. So thank you. Have a great day.